this is Alex with Minerva. Today we're going to be working on a so long foot pattern and 7948. It is a loose fitting dress from the McCall's Pattern Company. It is perfect for beginner sewists as it's rated at easy. It comes in two different size ranges from 6 to 14 and 14 to 22. You can use a linen crepe or our gorgeous tufted Swiss dot cotton fabric. But before I show you the fabric that we're going to be using today, I wanted to remind you to sign up for a Minerva Craft Club account. You get a discount for 12 months on your orders. And of course, don't forget to show us your makes. We get tons of inspiration from what you are making and we love seeing how you use our gorgeous fabrics. I'm going to be linking the pattern and also the fabric and any notions that we are using today. So let me show you this gorgeous tufted cotton Swiss dot fabric. It's got these little dots of um, raised fabric. It's available, of course, on our website and I will be linking you that. It's also available in different colors. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned before, we're working on McCall's 7948. They are two size ranges for this pattern, so I wanted to make sure that you are looking at both of them. They are size ranges from six to 14, and from 14 to 22. Make sure that you are selecting the correct one when you purchase the pattern. We're going to be doing view C with some sleeves. So let me show you the pieces that we're going to need. You're going to need pattern piece number one, and this is the front bodice, and you're gonna cut one unfold. You're going to need pattern piece number two. This is the bodice back, and you're gonna cut one on the fold. You're also going to need pattern piece number three. This is the front neck facing and you're going to cut one on fold and you're also going to cut one of interfacing on the fold. You're also going to need pattern piece number four. This is the back neck facing and you're going to cut one on the fold and then one of interfacing on the fold. You're also going to need the skirt front. This is pattern piece number seven. You're going to cut one on the fold. You're also going to need pattern piece number eight. This is your skirt back and you're gonna cut one on the fold. You're going to need pattern piece number nine and you're gonna cut three on the fold. And remember, I am adding sleeves to view C, so I'm going to need the sleeve pattern piece and that is number 10 and you're gonna cut two. Don't forget to mark your notches, put your dots or any other markings that you need to do. Go ahead and don't forget to interface fabric piece number three and four, which are your facings. You are also going to need thread to match your fabric. And you are also going to need a half an inch button or a 13 millimeter button. We're linking all of these below. You're also going to need a little bit of interfacing. So go ahead and get your fabric ready and sew along with me. All right, now that we got our fabric all ready, we are gonna go ahead and sew our back bodice to our front bodice. Sew it right sides together. We are gonna go ahead and stitch at the shoulders. Don't forget to match your notches first. And you are going to go ahead and stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or a one and a half centimeters seam allowance on both sides of the shoulders on both sides. Don't forget to lock in your stitches at the start and at the end. Do not stitch the sides right now. We are only going to stitch both shoulders. Go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and stitched 
my bodice front to my bodice back and I went ahead and used my overlocker or serger and then I went and pressed my seams towards the back. So we are gonna put this off to the side and we are going to grab our front facing and our back facing and we are going to stitch. Again, match the notches at the shoulders. So you're going to go ahead and again stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters on both sides. Don't forget to lock in your stitches and the pattern also calls for you to finish the outer raw edge. You can always use your overlocker or your serger or you can always turn it on itself kind of fold it on itself. I'm going to go ahead and use my overlocker just to finish the raw edge. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I stitch my front facing to my back facing. I also trim the seams at the shoulder and then I also finish the seam around. So now we're going to grab our bodice and then with right sides together, we are going to pin the facing to the bodice. So don't forget to always start at your notches. another pin right down the middle and then don't forget to match your shoulder seams very important because we want things to match on both sides Now we are going to stitch or pin the back. All right, so now we have our front pinned to our back. So I want you to go ahead and stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters. And I want you to start at the middle front and go all the way to the back. And then we're also going to uh, follow these um, little slash lines because we have to cut down the middle. So we're going to go start from the middle front all the way to the back. We're going to pivot and go all the way down and finish here. And again, we're going to start in the middle, go all the way around, and go down. I'm going to go ahead and show you this in my machine just so you can see this. And then we're going to go ahead and slash this. So go ahead and stitch your facings to your bodice now. All right, guys, we are stitching our facings to our bodice. So as always, don't forget to start with a couple of stitches to lock them in. 
And now I'm going to pivot. All right, so do that for both sides. Okay, so we went ahead and stitched our facing to our bodice, and now we are going to go ahead and cut right down the middle, and make sure that you are not cutting your stitches. Trying to get as close as possible without cutting my stitches. So you can go ahead and just trim all of this. And now we are going to also We are going to flip this over and what we really want to do is we want to go ahead and understitch. So we cut this, so we're going to turn it and we also have to trim these corners. Again, make sure you are not, are not cutting your um, your stitches, do that on both sides. We're going to turn it, right? And then my machine's not gonna be able to get all the way to the tip, but I wanna definitely understitch all the way around so we can turn this over. So go ahead and understitch your facings just because we want to make sure that the facing is rolling towards the inside um, of the bodice. So you want to make sure that you are catching this seam allowance, which I'm also going to trim probably halfway and then understitch. I'm going to show you that also on my machine. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so we stitched the facing to the bodice and I also made sure that I pressed my bodice and I also went ahead and put a little tailor's tack, kind of like a little spot since it's going to be opening and closing quite a bit. So now we are going to go ahead and stitch our facing. I also went ahead, of course, as usual, and you want to make sure that you clip your curves because you definitely want to make sure that your, um, that your bodice, your fabric is laying flat. So go ahead and stitch. And you wanna make sure that your seams are towards the facing and not the bodice. And you want to stitch as close as possible. Right, making sure that all of that seam allowance is towards the facing and not towards the bodice. So, starting stitches. And just keep going because you want to make sure that Again, that all of this fabric is towards the facing. And not towards the bodice.
gonna stop right here because I don't quite know how close my machine is gonna be able to get to um, these end. So I'm gonna stop right here. All right, now that we stitched our facings to our bodice, we're gonna go ahead and stitch the sides. So we right sides together for both sides. Don't forget to match your notches and pin. Pin your notches first, as you always should. So go ahead and stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters. Don't forget to back stitch at the start and at the end. Go ahead and do that for both sides of the bodice. All right, so I went ahead and stitched my side seams and now is a great time to try on your bodice. If you like things to be a little bit more loose, like this dress is intended to be, you can leave it as is, or perhaps you like things to be a little bit more fitted, now's the time to kind of take it in if you want to do that. But once you get that done, you're going to put that off to the side and you are going to grab pieces seven and eight, and you are going to right sides together. Which is going to be our Got the little Swiss dots, and you're going to grab the other piece. And again, I want to make sure that we match our notches. And we are going to stitch both sides. And these are longer pieces because remember we're going to gather these so you want to make sure that you pin both sides again match the notches And you are going to stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters. Don't forget the back stitch at the start and at the end. Go ahead and do that for both sides. And these are pieces seven and eight. Once we do that, I'm going to show you how we are going to um, create some lines of stitches so we can go ahead and gather. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I stitch piece seven to piece eight. And now we are going to go ahead and do some gathering stitches. So on my machine, the longest running stitch is a five, that's length. And you wanna make sure that you not do not back stitch at the start or at the end, and that you leave your threads long because what we wanna do is pull on those threads so we can even our gathers. So you're gonna go ahead and do two rows, one and a quarter inch, away from the raw edge and then another long run of stitches and you want to do that at half an inch away from the raw edge so go ahead and do that only for the top part of piece seven and eight
one row, and now we want to do another row. Again, this we want to do half an inch away. Leave your threads long. So I have two rows of my longest stitch length, which is five on my machine. Now let me show you how we are going to gather these. Do this for the front piece and also the back piece. All right, now that I went ahead and did two rows of stitches, one and a quarter inch away from the raw edge, which is also six millimeters and another one and a half an inch, 12 millimeters, I am going to go ahead and pull on those threads. And I did two rows of stitches on the front piece and then two rows of stitches on the back piece because they are long runs. So I definitely wanna pull on those stitches and then even my gathers, as in keep pushing them down, down the fabric because you wanna make sure that your gathers look um, even. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and pull your gathers. I promise you it will look absolutely fantastic once we are done. But you want to go ahead and keep moving those gathers all the way down. That's why we don't want to do, we want to split this up in between front and back piece. So go ahead and do that now and make sure that your gathers look nice and even all the way around. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and pulled my threads and evened out my gathers. This is for piece seven and eight. Now we're gonna go ahead and put that off to the side and we're gonna grab pieces nine. And we have three of these. So you're gonna go ahead and stitch these again, right sides together. You are going to find the notches. You're gonna pin you're going to pin all three pieces together. So seven and eight work together. These are going to be, think of nine, one big circle. So we got two pieces together. Now we're gonna grab another piece. So our third piece. And we are going to, same thing, right sides together. You are going to stitch these together. And you're going to do the same thing that we did before. You are going to create two long runs of stitches. But remember to stitch the sides first 
and then we are going to do the gathers. So go ahead and stitch all three of these pieces. This is piece number nine and we cut three of these. So we are going to go ahead and stitch all three pieces. So we have three pieces, so one and two together, two and three, and three and one. So again, we want to create a big circle. So stitch five eighths inch seam allowance. Don't forget the back stitch at the start and at the end. For all three of those seams, we're going to create one big circle with those three pieces, and then we're going to go do long running stitches for gathers. Go ahead and do that now. Okay guys, so I went ahead and stitched all those pieces number nine together and I did my two rows of my longest running stitch so I can gather. So just like I did with the other ones before, I'm going to find my stitches right here. They're big long pieces so make sure you take your time and again pull one set of threads and we gotta pull same thing go ahead and gather all of these stitches make sure that all of those gathers look nice and even throughout and then I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna put all of these pieces together go ahead and do that now so we went ahead and did all of our gathers for piece seven and eight which is the middle um, skirt piece and then we also need those three pieces for nine which is the bottom of the skirt so you are now going to match your notches on that middle skirt towards the bodice and i put my little pins here kind of sideways so I can find them really quick. So there they are. You want to make sure that you match those notches and that your gathers are even all the way through. And then once you do that, I want to make sure that you also match your side seams for this middle skirt piece. Go ahead and stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters all the way around. Make sure that your gathers are even all the way around. You want to make sure that you don't have a bunch of gathers in one spot and then flat on another. You want it to be all really nice and consistent all the way through. Once you do that, we're going to piece, we're going to pin the bottom piece of the um, of the skirt. So go ahead and do that now. So again, I went ahead and stitch. See how nice my gathers look. And let me show you the inside. I also went ahead and um, overlocked my seams and I pressed them towards the bodice. So now I want you to do the same thing with pieces nine. So go ahead and make sure that you do this. the same way and I want to make sure that when you pin pieces number nine that your side seams for the front piece are one-third of the way from the side seams so one-third of the way and then your third seam needs to be dead on center so let's go ahead I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to show you what it looks like So I went ahead and pinned my um, my last pieces, number nine, which are in three pieces. So you want to start with the center seam for one of the pieces, and you want that to be dead center on the back, and then space them out a third of the way then you definitely want the other two seams to be a third of the way away from from the back so they look like they're a third away from the center so go ahead and stitch 
all the way around. These gathers are gonna take some time, just a little bit of adjusting, moving your gathers, making sure that everything looks good, that everything's even. So once you have all that pinned, go ahead and stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters all the way around. Use lots of pins because you want to make sure that your gathers are again even, that they, you don't have a big bunch of gathers in one spot and flat on another. So take your time. So go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and finished all my gathers and look how nice this looks. So I hope yours turned out the same way. I, of course, went ahead and pressed my seams towards the bodice. But now we are going to put this aside. We are going to grab our sleeves. Because remember I said that I was going to do view C with some sleeves. So you're going to go ahead and grab your sleeves. And with matching your notches, pin 5 8 inch seam allowance or 1.5 centimeters. Go ahead and stitch that go ahead and do that now for both sleeves all right so i went ahead and stitched my sleeves and i also did two rows of stitches at the top of the sleeve remember those go six millimeter or quarter inch and 12 millimeter or half an inch just so you get some ease stitch on your sleeves so now it's time to go ahead and set in our sleeves so grab your dress and with right sides together go ahead and put in our sleeve and you always want to start for this at your seam towards the bodice and then you want to mark your notches and all of McCall's patterns a good way to know if you are sitting in the right sleeve is one notch means the front and two notches means the back so you know if you have if these are not matching something is perhaps wrong maybe you have the sleeve on the wrong side so always make sure you match those notches. That's why it's so important to do those. Even though sometimes we just say, no, we don't want to do those, we do. And also you have three dots, one, two, three. So this middle dot means that is your shoulder seam. So you definitely want to make sure that you put that in. And that goes right at the seam in the shoulders. And then you can go ahead and just kind of ease your sleeve in. So go ahead and keep pinning all the way around. Looks like I may need uh, to loosen up some of my E stitch. So let's do that. So there we go. So now it's right. Go ahead and pin. So I want you to do this for both of your sleeves. And once you are done pinning these in, I want you to go ahead and stitch. Yet again, 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters all the way around. Go ahead and do that for both sleeves. All right, so I set in my sleeves. I gave it a good press. And of course, I always love it when those seams match. Um, so all you have left is to do the hem on your sleeves. And the pattern calls for you to uh, turn it up. 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters and then also do the hem for um, your dress same thing just turn up the hem 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters and then top stitch 
And last but not least, for you to do a, um, a thread loop and attach your button and you are all done. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that so long. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will answer those. Don't forget to show us your makes. We get tons of inspiration and we love seeing those. And of course, don't forget to sign up for a Minerva Craft Club account. You get a discount on your orders for 12 months. And thanks again, and we will see you next time.